Okay, I think just about everybody is uh, almost here. I, I want to introduce you guys to uh, Cleve Pastito. He's uh, the son of Clifford Mahuti, in case any of you know who Clifford Mahuti is. And speaking of shaman, Malcolm, uh, Cleve is an actual medicine man raised from childhood. And so he's kind of almost probably, possibly the last of his kind. And his father was an engineer and he's kind of a mechanical engineer. <clears throat> he worked on Black Hawk helicopters in, uh, in the military. He was very fascinated. I showed him some of your stuff and I also showed another gentleman, Kevin Petrilli, who's coming from a different perspective and we have Cleve here with us now. now after uh, Dan goes through the presentation, Cleve's gonna give some of his insight connected to Zuni wisdom, what he thinks you guys are, uh, what he thinks he can relate that to from Zuni wisdom. Oh, yeah. it's a real pleasure to get right. that. Yeah. But first we wanted to like have Dan go through his PowerPoint, his deck, and this is kind of a capstone for the Earth Origins presentation because we, we missed having you there, Malcolm, and we wanted to do this follow-up and put the capstone on and relate everything that those guys were referencing in mythology and ancient wisdom seems to have some crossover and lap over, you know, uh, cascading lap overs to what you're doing and what the science is with this uh, vortex based map. You know, we have Malcolm Bendall here of Strike Foundation and Mike of How To and Dan of the Science of Freedom. Uh, did I get that right, Dan? I wasn't dex dyslexic on that, was I? Yeah, you got it right. Okay, sometimes I'm saying the freedom of science. We and wish. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, yeah, wishful thinking. <laughs> um, so I see all these synchronicities, especially since Marco showed up at the last Earth Origins event. Uh, him and Dan and a bunch of other guys had, you know, confluential uh, experiences where everything seems to be flowing together somehow, even though people have been kind of on their own lone wolves for many years, possibly decades. I'll just give a brief introduction to myself. I'm Robert Dakota of Worldviews Media. And I, I came to this through the esoteric realm as well. I was into spirituality and I, I came through theology um, and then art. Um, and ever since, uh, I guess, 2004, since I've been in, in Sedona, I've been documenting and filming ancient culture or ancient sites or people connected to or understandings of ancient culture to try to find you know, some of these lost technologies or, you know, possible philosophical ideas that could help us now and in the future. Um, so that's, that's my quick introduction. I want to bring in Malcolm and then I want to let you take over Mike so that we don't get too far out of time. And uh, uh, if you want to introduce yourself, Malcolm, and then Mike, you could start with your deck and we could take it from there. How does that sound? You mean, you mean Dan? Dan, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Okay. I'm Malcolm Bendel. Uh, my history is, uh, you know, uh, the last of the Mohicans. I'm 25% Tasmanian Aboriginal, and uh, our race was wiped out completely. So the last of the last. There was a prophecy about that too, that... Um, uh the Dutchman said surely this is the great south land of the holy spirit and uh captain cook and uh the french said surely the tasmanian aboriginals are closest to the garden of eden they have no clothes they sing and dance all day and they're the happiest people on earth and then they wiped them out because darwin said that their skulls were the missing link between the apes and man hmm. So, you know, that's the reality of it. So, so basically, that the spiritual doors you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, opened. And I think that the, the world of wisdom 
you know, is not just knowledge. It's it's the, uh, you know, the further you go back in history, the further you can go forward in history, uh, in life. And uh, so, so you know, the, the strange thing about it is that, you know, wisdom comes from spiritual enlightenment, you know, and uh, bestial uh, pleasures come from other places. So, so the, uh, I think the, uh, uh, to go forward in technology where we've run into the dead end is because uh, you know these those that uh, these sacrifices you have to make ironically or maybe practically for uh, just to um, you know go to those sources and then try and bring that information from those sources into society is a very fraught path yeah so a very difficult path so and uh, to do that you know, I my only solution was that I, you know, went on islands around the world and just isolated myself, so I could hear, you know, the still voices and you know and you know comprehend, um, you know, incomprehensible things because I I believe that the um, current construct is almost impossible to bring forward, uh, you know, any constructive knowledge because the um, the powers that be just, uh, you know, want the status quo. And, you know, um, so I think what I'm excited about is with this group is that uh, bringing like-minded people together and, uh, you know, it's really at the tip of the sword and it, it is time for this to come. So, you know, I keep on talking about the 144,000 enlightened ones. And uh, I think this is a group, uh, you know, a subset of that. So, um, and I think that, uh, the timing is now, and I think that there's been a huge change in the last year. I think that that uh, you know, with everything that's opening up now, and uh, you know, with the uh, you know the vortex maths as part of that, the Vedic maths as part of that, uh, you know, and and you know the uh, um, you know uh, if you deny your past, you deny your future. So so basically, I think it's an exciting time. Because uh, the uh, you know, what I'm doing now here on an industrial scale uh, is uh, you know the bring uh, bring energy production or the the I think what has to happen is that number one that people know that plasmoids exist that there are you know um, I think uh, uh, conscious energy uh, I think as uh, uh Moray King sort of says, you know, it's conscious energy. So, so and my uh introduction uh was uh maybe a little bit more controlled uh lightning than some, but uh Guy Bolinsky, who some people here know uh or know of, um, he built a machine uh which I went into, which effectively infused myself with plasmoids under the basis that uh, with a guy called Michael Milich from the Navy, US Navy, who ran all the cold fusion conferences and stuff. Uh, so, but anyway, I spent three months and I figured that because uh, I'd hit a wall in my understanding. And so I thought, but I understood that, uh, and strangely enough, I didn't even find out that they were called Shamir by Solomon, uh, the Shamir, the plasmoids, yeah. So, and it's a lot in a name, but I only just learned that a, you know, a month ago or so. And uh, I think Randall uh, was familiar with the term. So I deliberately infused myself with the plasmoids because I want a relationship with them, had a vague relationship. Uh, and uh, by infusing myself with plasmoids, I got a you know, direct relationship and then isolating myself. So, uh, you know, that was just too much other static coming in. It's very difficult while I'm here and in any city to, uh, think and survive even uh, because of all of the uh, different forces at work. I have my island in the Maldives and, uh, you know, um, uh, I'd rather be swimming with the dolphins there than uh, being where I am. But uh, but what's necessary needs to be done, and that is to bring forth uh, the technology in a way that people can see in, in a practical way, even though it's not what I would like to be doing which would be the implosive turbine, uh, which I designed, but at least it's um, 
retrofitting and getting people to know that plasmoids exist and technologies um, you know in the past you know will pave the way for our future so but that all has to be defined and I think Dan I think you've got a good uh, roadmap forward and uh, so that's my introduction I've been working on this my first cold fusion machine I built in 1998 got started building spent five million on it and it was working in 2001 so and that's where my trouble be began so Anyway, I'll hand it over to Dan because uh, we need a path forward and uh, we've all got our own experiences. But I think the thing is that, uh, you know, we all need each other. So, Robert, there was a, um, a conference, Earth Origins 5, last April, and part of that segment was to get Malcolm involved and, and tell people more about what he's doing. So this is kind of a follow up to that, but it's also a bridge to uh, a set of things, initiatives that we want to um, take on going forward. And um, and what I would suggest for this meeting is that we, we start with an update from Malcolm on uh, commercialization, which isn't the how or um, other science of it. It's just this is the practical application and the, the ways through the Strike Foundation uh, that Malcolm is bringing this technology out, which uh, is a huge kind of a, we'll call it an icebreaker. You know, somebody's got to break the ice and lead the way so that there's a path for everyone else. So that's that's what we want to start with. The second piece is that um, this is in the category of uh, reality is is far more fantastical than uh, than the fiction. And, um, and so when you hit people with, it, especially if they're not already at a, a running pace, uh, it seems, you know, crazy and sound. But when you put the pieces together, there's much more coherency in the story and the history and the technologies than you would believe. So uh, I want to take a little tour um, through two things. One is, you know, most people are familiar with plasmoids come up through Maury King. So we just want to go over a, tech, uh, uh, a Tesla Tech 2022 briefing by uh, Maury King just to show people kind of um, the broad range of techniques there is for tapping into this technology. And then the final segment uh, would be um, a description of some of the initiatives, um, some things that, that I'm doing with Science of Freedom, um, Randall Carlson's doing some, um, and, then, and then Robert is also doing some with the homeschool and some retreats. So the the goal i think and what what everyone on this call has in common is the end game is which this needs to be uh put in a um a package the science the history that people can understand we need to meet them where they are and then we need to um build a community up around it so um that's part of what what i'm doing my background i'm an electrical engineer i worked in aerospace and defense for 33 years started out with tactical fighters and did a little AI work and then work in ground systems, ground robotics, tactical robotics. Um, but my passion for the last 15 years is kind of discovering some of the whys behind the, the science and the physics. And there's a there's an ancient physics that I want to talk about and bring back, but also how that, that fits in. And when you figure out why we don't know about these sciences or why we don't know our true history, then you get into the other part of the science of freedom, which is the science of sovereignty and, you know, the powers that be kind of thing. So that's what I suggest. If, if everyone's OK with that, uh, we can kind of go down that road. Sound good? Uh, and I'm going to ask everyone if they want to. There's a, about a 30 minute uh, presentation by um, Gary Ling that really sets the stage. And so there's people on this call or people that might be watching this video that really want to get level set of what we're talking about in commercialization, this 30 minute would describe the approach and the to the technology based on Malcolm's work, as well as somebody who's taken Malcolm's work and commercializing it, in this case, for third world countries who don't have infrastructure and that need uh, to have electricity. So uh, I'd like to take a poll. Is Would that help level set everyone. Uh, it talks about waste recovery and how the, the plasma technology is being applied at the elementary level. 
So does that make sense to everybody to start with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. Mike, if you want to cue that up and then we'll, we'll come back and then we'll let Malcolm talk about much larger scale applications of the similar technology, but it'll give everybody that visual and get in their mindset exactly what we're talking about with Malcolm in the current phase. Ballsy thinking, the gender agnostic antidote to sloppy thinking. So you might look at that as, you know, uh, literally what it is, which is a way to, to get zero emissions and more efficient fuel in third world countries. Someone else may look at it and see that's a great high school demonstration project. I can go to Home Depot, buy those parts, put them together, uh, kind of like Paul Pantone did with the GEET technology. They'll recognize it for that. Now, what Malcolm has done is he has his own twist on that. Someone else might look at it and say, um, you know, what is the Hilsch tube in there? How, how does that work? And how does it transmute uh, material? And so now you get into a deeper meaning. So the, but the biggest takeaway that for me is that Malcolm has getting this out there to the world, which is all the other inventors, they have not made it across the goal line. So that's a, that's a big way. So this is kind of our baseline, um, you know, goal, getting the football across the goal line. So we'll call it our beachhead. And then um, Malcolm is doing a lot of other uh, activities through the Strike Foundation. And so I'll let Malcolm talk about generically um, some of those activities of this baseline technology. And uh, but that that's just the beginning. And we'll talk about that in the second segment. Malcolm, do you want to talk about some of the other things the Strike Foundation is yeah, doing? I think you've got the yeah, if you've got the photos, the latest set of photos of our painted spheres, yeah, or as Gary would say, spheres. <laughs> yeah, what the culture, man. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, I think it's a, a Shamir technology sphere. So I think <laughs> he's mixing Shamir with sphere. Yes, yeah, so it's sphere, spheres. Right. So anyway, the but the um, if, if we Mike, those, you're bringing those up. There, Mike, you got the latest set of photos I sent through of the painted spheres. What I've done here is just identical, just scaled up, exactly the same technology. And I wanted to, to share a few little insights. As far as I'm concerned, you know, what I'm doing is interdimensional. And uh, my instruction comes from the plasmoids themselves. So I create homes that they like. Um, and to do that, um, that's a 400 uh, kilowatt. We're doing 400 kilowatt and uh, one megawatt. The build out in total is 20 megawatts, and that'll be a 40, uh, 500 kilowatt machines. So, what we've got there is we bring the uh, water in its gas phase that's ionized uh, and the plasmoids. And uh, the, uh, the thing is, is that the uh, and it's an actual, uh, you know, I, I take the, the equation of, you know, one on one being, you know, say one on the, uh, the exhaust side and one on the intake side, uh, the plasmoids. And the vortices, if you take time itself, is the, the numbers of time itself are the vortices numbers. Pyramids, the step pyramids go, eight, nine, 10, 10, nine, eight. Well, eight times nine times 10 is 720, uh, times 720 is uh, 518,400, 518,400, which is the 51.84 degrees on the Keops pyramid. Uh, half of that makes your 25.92 uh, degrees, which is the angle of the King's chamber, which is the melting point of hydrogen, which obviously they knew. And that's why they put the 51.84, because that's like the face of the clock and the, the second and hour hands and minute hands of the clock give, give you all the clues that you need because you just take, uh, you know, the six days of creation multiplied by, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, you get 518,400 multiply that by uh, 60 again to get arc seconds and you end up uh, in Tibet in the Himalayas because Brahma all time is uh, 311040. Uh, so that's time. Now, 
if you realize that time itself is a combination of the 518400 number is eight times nine times 10 times 10 times eight, nine times eight, which is your three step pyramid. And then if you go to your uh, six step pyramids, then it's one times two times three times four times five times six times six five, times five times four times three times two times one. And you'll see all those step pyramids and you, now you'll understand why I have those in my notes and upside down step pyramids because uh, that's the vortex mass that what you're doing is you're imploding you know if you take it the other way you can go you know uh, six five four three two one or you know one two three four five six if you go six five four three two one then the energy on the outside is more than the inside uh, which is your explosion and uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six into the center or the top of the pyramid. And if you invert the pyramid as a, everything's got a mirror plane as the pyramid does, that's why it has mirror planes on all those edges, which makes it uh, not, not four-sided, but eight-sided, but they're mirror planes. And that's what they're trying to tell us is that um, if you take a mirror plane of those numbers, then you've got your five, one, eight, four hundred. What I've done in here, and you see the transition there, that's, if you just hold on that for a second, Mike, that transition there is the first time I've ever achieved uh, commercially. Uh, it's 51.8 is what we managed to get it spun at because that means you have to have a different angle on the spinning device because it always pulls up. But we managed to get it within 0 0.04 uh, within tolerance of our the angle at which time moves at for the transitions between the spheres, which represent... The sun is a, the time is the, the mold within which matter is formed. So I can't change what's in the glass, but what I can do is change the shape of the glass. So, and uh, that takes no energy. In fact, it's positive. You're pouring it in one glass to another or you're transmuting the shape of the glass. So, so basically what I believe is that number one is that that sphere is actually uh, like the sun, it's 432, which is the sun's uh, radius. And uh, so, and that means that a four inch sphere plus a three inch sphere plus a two inch sphere equals 51.84, the angle of the Cheops pyramid. And the, the angle of the King's Chambers at 25.92. The fact is, is that it's a, the sun is a frequency imprinting device. If you're going to go from ether to matter, you need to imprint frequency. How do you imprint frequency into ether? Right, so, and, and my reverse engineering and the, the thing behind it was, and my understanding was, which is uh, obviously uh, mainly through, you know, prayer and meditation and being by myself with no other human input for many years, so as I could get into the still point where uh, there is no time space. And then I can see everything that was and everything that could be from that point. When I come into society, I lose that piece. So I get a bit growly bear like now because I'm easily distracted from that piece and it's difficult to keep that piece. And so I prefer to be on my island and play with my dolphins and not interact with humanity at all is my preferred route. But to get this technology out there, I have to suffer being in cities, which is like, you know, somebody scraping their fingernails on a blackboard. And but anyway, I'll go over this. So what I I view this device as it's 24 inch sphere because 24 is the key number for frequency, 24 uh, of matter. So uh, 24 times 11.11, which is the frequency of the sun. It's the only demonstrable frequency. It changes its poles every 11.11 years. So 24 times 11.11 is C in music, which is your 266, which is your which is your 2.66 is the density of every material in the Cheops pyramid. The limestone is 2.66 density. The basalt is 2.66 density. The uh, the uh, red marble is 2.66 density. Why? because 2.66, your 266 is uh, C sharp in the real stuff. And there's a, in my notes, you can see there, there's a geometric, again, the eight, nine, 10, 
it's not a coincidence. So it's, you know, um, uh, you've seen in my notes anyway, eight times. Um, it's uh, uh, the musical, the, the actual musical uh, frequencies have got a gap going like one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 the gap is constant. But with the sphere, the, um, the exhaust gas comes in there, which provides a shock wave, which provides resonance, and it's a four, three, two sphere. And as I said, that resonates at 51.84, which is actually then the, that's, uh, the radius there is vibrating uh, backwards and forwards from that zero point at your 259.2, which is the melting point of hydrogen, or protium is actually the correct term for it. And then the that gives you a great year of the precession oh, equinox of 25,920. Sorry? Yeah. So so anyway, the, the so my idea is that what's happening here, if you take an equation one on one and the exhaust gas is one because it's being measured out by a cup, which is the cylinder, and the uh, vacuum is one because it's it's again being measured out by a cup, which is a cylinder. So you've got one on one. What I believe is happening in this machine is that because it's a vortex tube and it's a Hilsch tube, that's where um, originally the thing came, you know, my uh, revelation came from there because you're separating uh, dueling tornadoes here and it's separating out hot and cold. The center of this thing, even though the outside uh, can get up to you know 1200 1600 degrees c uh if you drive it hard enough uh the inside goes down in temperature to uh, maximum being 80 minus 86 point c in the center while the outside is uh it's melted already melted all the stuff so and that's to destruction but that's only with um by reducing the size of the pipe is the tuner so basically and that's what i believe is happening is your one-on-one -on -one equation is that one is the time on the exhaust and one is the time on the uh, input. If you uh, uh, spin inwards uh, implosion uh, into a vacuum, you're actually uh, reversing time, which means you live longer, and if you're on the outside, you're accelerating time. So one is life giving, one is life taking. So expanding force, which we call a positive charge, is spinning anti-clockwise and spinning out. So I think of everything as form and function. I understand the plasmoids as form and function. And uh, so that's, and, and I believe that because I isolated myself and through prayer and fasting got into a state where I literally just downloaded the form and function of a plasmoid, what shape it is, how the electrons and protons, which are crap words anyway, because I don't understand it as form and function. And those words are really destructive because you start talking about, oh, that's a proton. Well, what do you mean by that? What does that mean to you? You know, and this is where I think our problems lie in science is that, you know, in the 18th century, we looked at form and function and, and like Victor Charles boy, but absorb and copy nature, observe and copy nature. But you can't observe nature, you can't copy it unless you're in a state of mind yeah. where you don't comprehend it. And I don't, I believe that's a spiritual thing. And in this machine, what it's actually, I believe it's doing is that on the outside, it's going to two instead of one. And on the bottom line, it's going from 0.5 instead of one. So you've got a four to one ratio there. And I think that explains all of the anomalies uh, that we see in science in relation to cold fusion and and also we ran through the same system that you saw. We ran through leachate, which is actually a liquid from the tip gas uh, that it brings up a leachate, a liquid. The problem with the liquid is it's got cyanide and all sorts of nasty things in it. As you can imagine, everything goes into a tip, including radioactive stuff. So basically the bottom line, when we ran it through this machine, what it was doing, it was fixing the nitrogen from the air so that my fuel tank is actually the nitrogen in the air and we actually create a moment so um anyway so that's how i believe it's functioning and obviously you can see it's on industrial scale they want to have a go at the planetary power plant as well which is also on there which is using the whole planet as a solar panel which nikola tesla tried to do and was defeated so so anyway so that's um uh, been the build but i think the thing is uh to understand is that 
the way I understand it here, and I try and keep it simple, but to me, this is a time dilation device, which which uh, I create a potential difference through dilating and contracting and expanding time. <coughs> now, you can use that chemical terms and say, well, that's positive and negative and thunderstorm, all the rest of it. But I just between the group here, I, that's what I think I'm doing. It's, it's a time dilation. And uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Malcolm. Yep. So, so um, yeah. So, and, and what I want to do is sort of um, what I've been doing is the only way I can get a download, <coughs> but until I build that download, I, I can't, you know, I can't write about it. So, what I did was in the seven years it took to write my notes, I had to isolate myself, get in that still spot where I could see all things. And that's why uh, uh, our friend there, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot your name from the uh, uh, from the tribe, the tribal spiritual background. Sorry. Cleve. Cleve. Yeah, Cleve. So it, that uh, literally resonates with me because, uh, you know, I had the, uh, you know, um, experiences um, that brought me to where I am. And, uh, you know, and now, I think that just validates uh, you know, your description is really would be my description of where I believe, you know, this, this not, you know, it's because it's wisdom. It's not knowledge. The world's, the world's overwhelmed with knowledge at the moment, but not much wisdom. And so, and that's why I was, uh, you know, really pleased and gratified that, that uh, you've all taken the time to, to listen to us and, and also to input, because I think with uh, everyone here has got a little piece of the jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, obviously, I've had an unusual life. Um, and uh, if you read the book, The Shame, and you see it's not exactly a, you know, it's a, a tale of survival, not a tale of, uh, but now the next book that Roland Perry is writing is the chief author in Australia is, you know, about the success and the rollout of it. We have, as uh, said, the India program, we have South Korea want to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, with all our technology, we have in Tokyo, TEPCO, Mazda, we have all the car companies who have General Motors um, that have, uh, you know, been interested in the technology and, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, but, you know, that's been problematic because they want to own it all. That just come up today. But anyway, that's all confidential information, but I'm just telling you that there's, uh, there has been a change and now is the time to move because there seems to be, um, you know, the establishment can't hold the line anymore because they can't provide any new technologies that are, you know, going to be of any uh, real change to the world. Yeah? So, so I believe that this technology, you know, as I said, you can see I've just built that and the gratifying thing is that before it took me one year to build it and, uh, you know, and I didn't have the right transitions at the right angles. And I just believe that this is a miracle because everyone I needed to do it, even the metal spinners and the annealing guy, a guy called George Lush, who anneals all the turbine blades for, you know, Boeing and all the space programs and stuff. Uh, he annealed this with the, uh, and he makes talk about making homes, those spheres, I anneal them so that I, I make all the crystal structure cubicle because plasmoids like to sit in the center of cubes. And that, when I spent the time with Martin Fleischmann in Salisbury Plain a year before his death, you know, I was able to confirm his understanding. It's my understanding. And, and you know, once you embed these things with the plasmoids, they stay there. You know, there, if, uh, you, if you have the, the perfect crystal structure, and what we did was we quenched them with liquid argon and other gases, which is, uh, you know, um, a cocktail. But the point is, is then when you do the quenching process with that, and then before we run it, we actually uh, put it under a, you know, it's mainly argon, but it is a boutique gas uh, that will stick inside the metal. Uh, and basically be, you know, a little lunch pack for the plasmoids to go in. And then after they've eaten that, they're too fat to get out. So, <laughs> so basically they stay in there and do their job. So um, that's the treatment of the metal 
and the materials and the understanding of what a plasmoid views as a nice home, once you embed it in the metal, it can work for you and it will always work for you in that metal. And they're sentient conscious beings. They're a swarm mentality. They have a zero point. There is no time space for them because they have an embedded zero point and that creates their containment field. And once they're, uh, you've been generated, you know, um, they're uh, pretty much indestructible from my experience. You know, they, you can, they, we've had now, um, I was reminded the other day, we can still run exhaust through one of our exhaust pipes without the, the bubbler on it, you know, five years later, it's still going to reduce the amount of uh, hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide by 50%. So um, these are, uh, and I think that the thing is that we've lost our relationship with them because we've lost the spiritual depth that you need to talk to them. And they appreciated me going to an island, you know, to talk to them. They also appreciated me risking my life and embedding myself with them because it was a 50-50 bet when you charge yourself up to uh, 250,000 volts every three days uh, you know, that you're going to survive the process. Yeah. So, but I did. And so, and I isolated myself so I could um, communicate with them. And so therefore I think that the things that, you know, there's a unique opportunity for the world simply because I have that, relationship i do not have that when i goes in the cities it's sort of like that right it's a you know there's too much static here so i need to go back to my island and now india's given me a new island you know and i delivered to india the implosive turbine which is known as the vajra which is in those notes and i did it on exactly the prophesized date that it would be delivered uh, to fulfill the prophecy the vedic prophecy of the 10th avatar returns to Delhi with the Vajra, which I did. And, and I did it to fulfill the prophecy because in fulfilling the prophecy, I believe the platform and the, and the, <clears throat> like the, uh, the path, then, you know, the icebreaker, the path is now being laid for, you know, that understanding to come forward because it's time for it to happen. So anyway, and I'm really excited because, you know, the, there is a gap now, um, which was explained to me by a guru in when we did went and saw uh, with Randall, we went to uh, a, 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 an interview with uh, Tucker Carlson. And uh, yeah, then we stayed at a hotel and the owner of that hotel, uh, unfortunately, was, uh, you know, had had a lot of spiritual experience, was a bit of a, was trained by the biggest guru in India and, and who's died now, but he was pretty much himself. And he explained it this way is it's just that somehow the radio frequencies that I get, that the information I get here on a different bandwidth, and you can put it both ways, it's just different frequencies. Yeah. So basically I'm on one bandwidth and the rest of humanity seems to be on the other, you know, not the whole of it, but I mean, there's, there's obviously it's a, everyone's differently and, and I don't know, I can only, but I, I think that his explanation to me was that you need to have people that can interpret, you know, those things and put them. That's what Randall's been doing. And now Dan's helping in that process. And what we need to do, I think, is get all these technologies, um, you know, and all the, the engines that are built and all the rest of it explained, you know, through vortex mass, because it's, it's all to do with vortices. It's all to do with time and matter. And if you could, if, if, if you, and this explains a lot too, if, if matter is the mole, is time is the mole within matter is formed. And if you can change from a square cup to a hexagonal cup, you know, then you've changed it from say, you know, carbon to oxygen, you know what I mean? So uh, it, it's just a different, it, Form and function, sacred geometry, that's what we've lost in our society. The relationship between time, matter and energy. If we focus on uh, the problems that need to be solved, like, you know, the energy problem at the moment, we solve that and we use it for all the positive applications. Of course, 
people will use it for the negative applications, but um, I think that there's, we already have the capacity to destroy our civilization many times over. And <laughs> yeah, we've done it. Yeah. So, so, you know, I think it's, it's really about, and this is why I'm really uh, heartened by, you know, because obviously if you read my book, uh, it's not dissimilar to Nikola Tesla's story, you know, slander, defamations, theft, you know, I had all my possessions stolen seven times in a row, you know, so, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, the, it's just uh, Jesus wept the last, um, you know, the last, uh, what I've been building here, it's been horrendous, but what's going on, you know, so, but the point is, is that, yeah, it is a matter of, uh, I think that um, you, you know, we have a responsibility to try, mm -hmm. you know, uh, failure is not trying, you know, or yeah. being, or you know, uh, you know, don't let fear stop you because you know um, all of the things I've been through, which is seven assassination attempts and you know the mutilation of people I love and destruction of people I love and you know, and also including which really still upsets me is you know I sat with Martin Fleischman and saw a hollow shell of a man and I promised him that I'd finish his work, you know. Wow. You know uh, and in part of that, because of that, the um, distasteful and, and, you know, completely vulgar sort of, you know, greed and stuff like that, I vowed not to ever own anything. And the Strike Foundation is a not-for-profit and uh, it's an educational platform which rambles right into. And I know that uh, you know, the people here have the desire to teach because I think that that if you teach people, because it's it's enlightenment, just the sacred geometry itself, like the implosive turbine. If I just look at that, it 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 lifts my lifts my spiritual level. You know what I mean? I, it oh just no! Do you, know, do you know actually studies with the brain that that the same exact center is excited by beautiful music or art yeah. Uh, yeah. is the same center that if if you understand mathematics and geometry when you have an epiphany and you discover something, it's the exact same center. So. Yeah. And of course, and even this sphere that I've just, the image that's here, you can see the transitions are actually 51 point, and see, he got it that close, 51.8, right? which is, nice. you know, and it's just, when you look at it, it's, it's beautiful, it's mm -hmm. symmetrical, and something in your brain recognizes that as, you know, it's symmetrical. Well, it's, the, it's not even what's in our brain, it's in every cell in us and around us and every atom, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing fractal and system that is it, like i said i've in 30 years of, of sacred geometry studies uh, like i said that i i can go from any from a hexagon to a square to the pythagorean triplets you know back to a torus they're all in there it's just you know it's just dissecting them out basically look at the um, at the, the 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 deck the slide deck at how tube you know on how to Malcolm or how to strike it uh, foundation, you'll see where I've taken the cube and then just cut the corners yeah. off it. So it went from four sides to eight sides, yep. to 16 sides to 32 to 64, and yep. then becomes a sphere. And yep. that's, and I've been talking to the engineers now, and so has uh, Mike there, uh, how to, uh, to engineers about making those uh, uh, Hartman whistles, you know, which is basically uh the transition from ether to matter but using a, a physical form to do that which was all the shiva lingas are yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's a lots of things there but i think uh, marco uh, you have some uh on the vortex mass and you had some ideas about um you know what your vision was to move ahead because we we need to find a way ahead a path ahead i think dan's laid that out you know, like, I think, Dan, have you finished with that? I was that? Yeah, well, no, I, I want to transition. That was the first segment we're trying to wrap up out of the three. We have about a half hour to go. And I kind of want to um, segue into some of those pieces because there's a lot to talk about. But what Robert was saying about um, is that uh, really talking about balance of power because there's plenty of people who know what we're talking about, the technologies, the physics, but not enough of the general populace. And so that's the balance we have to, to, to uh, achieve. And so what I want to do now is transition. I want to make sure that like uh, 
Malcolm said that everybody knows that when he talks about how to, there's a 15 recorded presentations up there and the strikefoundation.earth has all of his notes. So that's where you need to go to dive deeper into that. Mike, can you bring up um, the uh, Maury King's charts? So what we're seeing here is an example and, and Malcolm talked about how far this can go. And um, it's well beyond just a heat recovery, waste re uh, heat recovery system, right? And we're talking about propulsion, freedom of movement, space travel. And so um, this is just the beginning, but you, you we need it's kind of a multifaceted front. We, we need the education piece. We need the hardcore application piece. And then we need to get uh, the ingenuity sparked out there. We need to get more people involved and bring and build up the community. So those are the kind of the lanes that when um, when we're talking about a path forward, we, we want to cover. So Malcolm's overnight success was a 50 year overnight success, all the way back to when he had his Tibetan monk, you know, teaching him when he was just a teenager. And so there's there's long journeys that that end up getting there. And another person when when we uh, want to meet um, the community, our audience uh, halfway is Maury King's work, obviously, right? And Tesla Tech, if you just go look at those um, people and what Maury King has done, um, he's studied um, the, the science behind it as well as the applications. And uh, what Mike hopefully is pulling up is a, a 2020. What material was that published in by Maury? Is it, he I, he it, gave me a copy of his last book. It had to do with water. He has where, three, where three books all on Amazon. Where? But what I'm pulling up here is if you go to teslatech.info, um, right there, you can have his 2022 Tesla Tech presentation. And that's his latest version. Just something else you referenced about Malcolm's uh, presentation on how to. Yeah, you're going to show people how to get there? Yep. So this is the full video series that Dan was referencing. And if you just go to howtube.com, like the main homepage, it links straight to this channel. And then you click on the video series tab here. And what you're looking at is a 15 or 16 um, video, video series where Malcolm does a deep dive into the whole thing. From the history all the way through to what he's doing today. And Com Carpenter, you had that that set up before that last minute is probably pretty I mean Dan sent through that to me which I appreciated you know uh, because I think Com uh, did summarize everything fairly well in that last minute and it seems like you got the last minute set up there I do should I play that just for a second what do yep. you think Dan or yeah, yeah go ahead call? we'll we'll just reverse the order I was going to do it but that let's bring it up um, and I'll comment on it after we listen okay here we go and so that shows then you have Oppenheimer, who was an avid reader of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and in the uh, immediate present, we have uh, somebody I'm working with, who is a, an Australian scientist engineer called Malcolm Bendel. And Malcolm Bendel is working now, and we are cooperating with him on building a new generation of engines, which essentially rely on the zero point, which are, and he has all the proof for the results. So it is, I think, now beginning to happen. And we hope that in the next few years, we will see an entire new uh, generation of technology replace the current one. I, I wanna thank you, Komi, for coming on Extra Politics Can you, today. Can yeah, freeze it there? So what this is, is I don't know how many, uh, you're probably already familiar with Mike Asala. This is the exopolitics.org channel that he does the interviews on. And Michael Sala has written a lot of books about secret space programs and ETs. But in this particular one, I suggest everybody go look at it. It's a, uh, an hour and 30 minutes. But Cone Carpenter is somebody who's very well versed and understands the world in all kinds of different ways. But in here, he specifically explains the um, the ancient Indian texts and what they mean. And uh, people treat them as myths, but they're more than that. And so it's a really good uh, primer on 
where some of this technology, especially the science that I'm going to talk about um, later on, is uh, is coming from. But he puts it into context, and it it, it meet, mates up well with some of the original teachers, instructors that Malcolm had. And so uh, that's why I think it's so important that and why Combe is, is working with Malcolm is in, in the whole India Foundation and what they're trying to do there is that we're, they're bringing back ancient wisdoms and sciences uh, that um, go all the way from what Cleve was talking about in terms of the Zuni wisdom, the Hopi prophecies, all the way, they, they, you can find the same stories back in the Vedic texts. And, um, and that's the full circle that I'm gonna describe in a little bit that we want to um, talk about and pull together those ideas. And so one thing that we, we always are challenged on is the, the terminology and you have to get past that and you have to look at the, the commonality and, and the, the truths that come out because they're gonna be consistent and, and we'll get back to that. So. I recommend everybody see this. Now, what I want to pull up is Maury King's because <clears throat> Maury King now is going to be someone who, let's see, pull this up here, who has been studying um, plasmoids. Can, can people see the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let me just go up to the top here. I'm going to only cover a bit, but what what where you can find this presentation is if you go to teslatech.info and right here um there's this maury king 2022 pdf that's what i'm pulling up you can also on rex research find his 2018 2019 but that is a great place to understand the history of plasmoids and the, the number of people and maury king goes back to the 70s as well of 50 years in in pursuing this and um, the consciousness comes out, the zero point comes out, the application, practical applications comes out. And the, the point I wanted to make is um, that you can do this in water, air, you can do it in electromagnetic spectrums, but the motion and the creation and the physics and the math and the reason the vortex math is so kind of fundamental is because they all work on the same principles. So um, Maury, I'm just going to kind of list some of these here, you know, talks about different ways to get at it and tap into what he's calling the zero point uh, energy. And so you can see the list here. And I would recommend you go through this deck to get caught up on all the types of uh, approaches that have been done over the years. And so you can go back to Henry Murray uh, and you get oscillators. These are more electromagnetic with some kind of uh, uh, ionization and radioactivity driving some of them. The whole Bedini thing, which is just using the magnetic spectrum, and most people don't understand the magnetics, but um, you can tap into it. That's another interface. Uh, in addition to water molecules, for example, um, you can see the the Kriyas here, um, and then you know nature is full of these, right? The coronas, the tornadoes. And so here are two examples. And so probably people looked at what Malcolm's doing and saw the GEET technology Paul Pantone's doing. So Paul Pantone's son, David, will actually be at Tesla Tech in August and will be bringing out um, their technology again. He's trying to teach people. So he's on the same mission. He's at the same mind where he's trying to bring back uh, the practical applications of this. Um, Ken Shoulders, of course, and so if you go to strikefoundation.earth, you'll see a lot of the original papers going back to Oppenheimer, um, Bostick, Shoulders, um, and then the more the the noble gas engines, and then um, I think Maury King's going to be presenting the thunderclap engine, which is really a, a mister, uh, a fogger feeding an engine, and uh, with the same kind of principle. So you can see there's different techniques to this. And Malcolm is an intuitive thinker, and when he gets into his quiet place, he sees these things, and he just works at a different level, and then he builds it, and then he tells people about it. So he works from the, the practical application up. And all these people that you see in Murray King's books, or he, he really wants to know what is driving the zero-point energy, and how do you practically tap it? And so those are two things that Malcolm has done and commercialized it, which is that's the beachhead that the community, I think, can rally around 
to do the education, to do the continued uh, experimentations and applications, practical applications from, you know, water um, purity, water cleansing to propulsion to um, power generation, uh, even, even the medical side once you get into it. So there's all these different facets of nature. The same process works at the quark level up to the galaxy level. And we need to collectively teach people the basics behind it. Uh, I think we can tell a very compelling story and we can also put together some practical applications. So that's kind of um, the transition between what you saw in the commercialization in the first segment with Malcolm and um, some of the ideas that we want to, uh, initiatives we want to take on going forward. And I think this core group here uh, will have a big part to play in that. So, it's hard uh, to comprehend what Malcolm just said. You know, there's a whole government that's going back to its original roots and applying it. And, and it's just, it's unbelievable what that means in terms of the tipping point uh, that all the last 30 years and all these inventors had to fight that Malcolm's been fighting. And maybe we're ready to turn the corner, but that's that's kind of what we need to do is springboard off that point. Well, the first center of excellence for plasmoids is just, was announced at the uh, Indian Ocean Conference at the conference. And then a week later, they officially announced the Indian government that the center of excellence for literally for plasmoids, it's reached that that uh, critical point, uh, critical mass. And the the paradox is that it's a bit of a, a Gandhi thing is that um, change the world, change yourself first. And that's what I sort of did. And the amazing story, which is which on the Indian side, which I need to share with you, which is just affirms something here. At that zero point, um, there was a point where Com Carpenter, who we did the, the conference with Randall and uh, uh, Mike, Robinson here and uh, Samadhi and myself, uh, Randall Carlson and myself. So that was with Com Carpenter, the one that I'd recommend everyone watch that. But but the uh, um, from that is developed now uh, with Com going ahead with these uh, 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 teaching and but also in combination with that the uh, Tesla's planetary power plant. So I think that the uh, um, that the whole concept of as they're going back to the Gandhi thing, um, what happened was I put my book, which is my living sacrifice, which is the shaman, uh, got someone to go to Nigeria and put it in the headwaters of Nile, because I, I had a spiritual experience at the zero point where Gandhi had done the same thing, and what and I brought the Vajra back, and he saw that in his because he changed his nation not by going into society and trying to change it, but by changing himself. Yeah, so, and then, so what, what I believed was that Gandhi won the political freedom of the Indian people, but by delivering back the Vajra, you know, what I was doing is, is you know, liberating them for you know, the, uh, the oppression of no energy. So by, by bringing the energy back into the society and then using that as a platform to bring that energy back into the world, that the thing was, and what happened was, I was in the, in the car with all the guys there, like, you know, I think it was the Admiral and thing. And I said, well, you know, of course, you know, Gandhi's ashes were put into the, the Nile and I put my book in there and that was heresy because they believed that that was, uh, you know, <laughs> that they went down there. They found his daughter, who was 96 years old, and Com Carpenter went up. And I got a phone call from Com apologizing on behalf of all of them because they they got stuck into me because I said that his ashes had gone down the Nile River because that's Kemet, alchemy, uh, because he saw that as the future of India. And I picked that up on the zero point. And then Com rang me up and he said, I apologize for that. I said, well, I apologize too. I said, because I cheated. You know, he went to his daughter. <laughs> I went to Gandhi himself at the zero point. <laughs> so, um, so, so that has given me some sort of credibility uh, with the Indian government. And with that, and I thought that was like timely story because what's happening with the material and the spiritual there that they're meeting. Yeah. And that's what we're doing, you know, and we have an opportunity here. And I'm, anyway, back to you, Dan, sorry. Well, uh, that's a, that's what we want to talk about next is the different initiatives. So Malcolm has a lot of big things going on commercially with foreign governments, with um, 
automotive industries with power plants generation of, all over the world. So that's part of what's going on. And that's the spearhead that's going to pave the way because that's practical. It's real. You can put your finger on it. It's helping people today. And it's a major turnaround that that he's made it that far. And then there's a couple other ones I want to talk about. One is the um, the science of freedom collaboration with HowTube. And then what Robert um, is going to be doing as a follow on to the Earth origin. So um, and then Randall may have another that maybe Mike, you can comment on. Um, so do you, are you ready to go to that? Talk about some of those is that we, speak, um, we can see it very well. Yeah. OK, so at the top, it's really Cleve and his dad and his work is going to represents a certain wisdom. And what what is remarkable about that is it's thousands of years old, kind of along the lines of the Hopi prophecy, where uh, it talks about um, interactions with off worlders. It talks about technologies run amok. It talks about quantum physics. It talks about harmonizing with nature. And that kind of sets the stage. I think that's one of what Robert uh, Hutchings' point was there, is that, you know, if, if that's kind of our aim point, there's a lot of wisdom that goes back with uh, the Native peoples uh, around the world. And we've lost touch with that. It's kind of the lost touch of the spirituality piece. So that's, that's uh, one element where each of these elements will be covered in a um in a set of charts but also a, a, a how-to kind of presentation like malcolm did with his technology and and once we work all the way around the wheel the idea is that we'll come to a kind of a, a clearer understanding and um and help provide clarity to the terminologies and the fact that um people over the ages and and even in our lifetimes have been telling the truth but they've been shut shut out for some reason so sacred geometry moving around the clock there you know you've heard um randall carlson talk about that and that's where you see certain ratios and dimensions show up both in nature and in in uh, ancient structures and that's not a coincidence and so that we need to understand that the the peoples uh knew somehow these these truths these insights uh, for ages the science of music is another piece, because when we talk about ratios, you really are talking about music in a medium, you're talking about 3D fields. And if you really go back to the original science and basis and build of music, you'll see where these uh, harmonics, the melodies and harmonics in music map directly to the 3D field uh, dynamics, the vortex-based mathematics. So that's kind of a key piece that, uh, that we can go over. The occult chemistry is using some of the um, the uh, Panjali Yoga's technology that you can listen to Cone Carpenter talk about. And they remote viewed late 1800s all the way up to the 1930s at the quark level on up to hydrogen and compounds. And their insights, this is before we had the, the traditional models of atoms and molecules, those insights map very closely with the macro that we could see that Schauberger, that Russell talks about. So there's some key inputs in there. If you look at really what oxygen is, it, it looks like an electrical coil. And so when you put a hydroxyl group on the end of it and you get the different properties. Um, so it's very interesting and it's insightful in terms of understanding really what's going on in Malcolm's tube, you know, the vortex, the tornado tube and the plasmoids. Walter Russell, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, but, but maybe not generally, is someone who had it um, squared away in describing how nature worked. He's another person that had this um, kind of event, life-changing event, and in, in, um, in kind of a download, as Malcolm says, and he came up with a brilliant set of sciences. But when you look at Walter Russell's now, with in combination with some of these others, the it, it becomes much more clear exactly, you know, what right looks like. Victor Schauberger is the one who copied nature. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him, but he, he, the emphasis here is on the, the, uh, the motion of creation. And it's the motion that's in those tubes. That's in the Taurus that, that ends up being, it's the same pattern that ends up creating life. It's the opposite of entropy. So it's about creation. Then you have Marco's vortex based mathematics, and that's basically a 3d, calculator that nature uses and i know that you talk about the toroid a lot but 
no matter what point you pick in space, those mathematics are going on constantly all the time. So everything simultaneously and sequentially is all being filtered and it all makes sense at any point you pick. And um, if you wanna pick a single point and look at a flow, you can get a sphere, you can get a, a, a toroid. And so brilliant insight into that. You know, Tom Bearden talks about phase conjugates and uh, Malcolm talks about mirrors. And then if you go into the math and the vortex based mathematics, then you'll see the same kind of mirroring going on. And you'll see Walter Russell's 3D um, uh, breathing uh, of, you know, harmonics, expansion and contraction uh, in resonance in 3D. That's what the vortex based mathematics gives you. And then there's plasmoids. So that's a combination of what Malcolm's doing, what Maury King's been doing, what Ken Shoulders is doing. And that's kind of a, an instant at a certain scale level. The, the thing about plasmoids is, is that it happens the same thing at all scale levels. Now, the, the piece that, that I'm bringing, um, I was introduced to the person who last 30 years decoded the ancient Vedic texts. And it's this, the Sankhya science, which is a, a 35,000 year old science, but it's, it's axiomatic fully unified field theory that that answers all the conundrums you know the black body the you can derive the speed of light you can uh, all all of the the common problems in physics get answered with this and so there's a big section on that now when you add that science to the practical applications and some of the other um the the music the harmonics um then you'll start seeing that we can tell the story all the way from one plus one equals two up to um, galactic kind of dynamics. And so it's very powerful. Then, then recently, um, you're probably familiar with uh, Stephen Greer's Disclosure Project. And so he just had a National Press Club event about a week ago. And he, what he's doing is trying to show that we've been in contact with ET off world. There's been a lot of technology that uh, exists, that has been reverse engineered. Uh, and that it's been suppressed and who's doing that and how are we going to change that and it kind of comes full circle back to Cleve and uh, Clifford Mahoudis the um, that where this was all predicted thousands of years ago so there's nothing new under the sun the idea of going around this wheel and, and going through this presentation is to answer these questions one is is nature's wheel work knowable and then um, has or can mankind successfully hitch both the mind and machinery to it? And then has it been done responsibly? So those are kind of the key questions. And uh, we, we apply all these sources and then try to um, come up with the answers. And so these files, everybody can get to this. These are out there. So this is the collection of files that uh, go around that wheel. And the idea working with Mike and how to is to um, make presentation modules that somebody could go and, and come up to speed on and then have a discussion or, a, um, or expand the knowledge or apply the knowledge. And so that's one thing um, that we're doing that, that's a result of what um, uh, Robert brought together with Earth Origins 5 and the kind of people, the diverse kind of people that he brought together there. And this, this meeting today is a result of that. So I just want to introduce that. Um, and then Malcolm has talked about his things going forward. And then I don't know, Robert or Mike, did you want to talk about what Randall's doing or what you're doing, Robert? Did you want to talk first, Mike? Um, I can be brief. Yeah, I can be brief because there's a real, that was a great overview, Dan. And um, as far as what we're doing um, with, on the Randall Carlson side, the sacred geometry, of course, is the fundamental, it's the base of, you know, the universe. And it relates to everything that we're talking about here today. And Randall's expertise uh, is right there. So he's, he's still learning about all the technology and so forth, but he's one of the best, um, and there's going to be more. For example, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hutchings, if you know, people like yourself and many others who want to come to the table and create content in collaboration with the rest of what we're doing, both independently and together. Um, that's what HowTube is doing. We're supporting anyone and everyone who wants to 
basically tell the truth. Randall and Malcolm have created a very special relationship. And what's going on there is Mal uh, Randall's simply going to be teaching the world in relation to what this technology is doing about the power and the application of sacred geometry in their personal lives and in their business. So he'll be focusing on that while, you know, the science and the people who know that really well. And Randall's a very, very good professor. So he's going to be bridging the gap between the two with the focus on the sacred geometry foundation as part of uh, delivering the education to the world. So that's it in a nutshell. And going forward with, uh, with Randall and Malcolm, there's some things in the works of them getting together and literally um, creating a very clean and simple presentation that takes the first step in taking the science and the sacred geometry. And together, we're gonna to put together a nice little video series uh, to release that at, uh, uh, to the world. And of course, that will just be the beginning, but that is to come. Yeah, I just think it's a timely point to point out just the how, and encourage everyone just how big this has got. But I want to encourage everyone because this is a big thing and it's surreal because it's reached the highest levels and there's a now a willingness to take this ahead. Whereas, as we all know, you know, and firsthand, because I spoke to Stanley Meyer's brother, you know, who 30 years after the murder was still paranoid, you know, and didn't want anything to do, wouldn't never want to be to call him again. You know, I mean, fear, the expectation of inadequacy has pervaded this whole thing because of what's happened to everyone else. But, you know, my philosophy is feel the fear and do it anyway. But I want to encourage everyone because this is a big thing and it's surreal because it's reached the highest levels and there's a now a willingness to take this ahead. Whereas, as we all know, you know, and firsthand, because I spoke to Stanley Meyer's brother, you know, who 30 years after the murder was still paranoid, you know, and didn't want anything to do, wouldn't never want to be to call him again. You know, I mean, fear, the expectation of inadequacy has pervaded this whole thing because of what's happened to everyone else. But, you know, my philosophy is feel the fear and do it anyway. So, <laughs> but, but the, uh, uh, with the guys in India, I just say that, that you know, the uh, we're not inadequate. We do have a lot of friends, and it is time for this to come out. And what we've actually achieved, what Randall achieved at and Joe Rogan show, is that since then all the plasmoids have come out in a platform. Uh, you know, NASA said the next generation of uh, of uh, their spacecraft are going to be plasmoid power. Lockheed Martin came out and said the next set of jet fighters is plasmoid power. The Israeli government officially, you know, want to see me in person uh, now. So, so basically, what's happened is there has been a world change, but the world now needs all of us because they've extinguished the people that knew how to do it. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? It's just like. <laughs> Don't laugh, Cleve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but seriously, you know, yeah. Your great grandmother told you this was coming. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> but the point is, is that, you know, all my mentors are dead and I wish that they were still around, but they're not. You know what I mean? It's quite a, you know, an adult moment where you realize that, you know, um, the responsibility comes onto you and there is no one else. They're just us, you know, and that's, I just want to, but we're not alone. And there has been a big change. And Con Carpenter is serious about what he said. You know, he says, you know, I mean, what we're doing is um, the platforms there in the island that I have, you know, the one island. And then I said, they said, well, we need an island. I said, yeah, I need to. And they understand that, at least that that they have a still have enough spiritually spirituality, realisation of spirituality in their society to realise that that you do need those people that can connect to other dimensions other entities you know alien civilizations and be able to but the only way to do that the paradox is to create that bridge between uh, all of us and humanity you know and that's difficult 
because you know it's a different frequency and that was that's the challenge but but i, I thought anyway sorry dan you know, let you to it yeah writing robert you ready what do you yeah think? yeah well i've uh i've been interested like i said in ancient culture and uh theology and philosophy i always thought that we're really in a spiritual warfare and i thought that when I was young, that the ultimate was going to be to uh, square yourself away spiritually, so that you know we could we could win the battle. I've been documenting a lot of elders like Cleve's father and other wise guys, um, such as the panel that's here. And part of my goal is just to familiarize and educate the general populace because if they were aware of the fantastic beauty that's all around us and and the wisdom from the past that could enlighten our present as well as our future i think a lot more people would be involved and um gung-ho uh, so the events are really about bringing people together as you saw, uh, Dan and others, uh, it was a good place for people to connect and talk in person. And I think that's so important. Uh, the spiritual element is to bring the people together. Cleve's father said once at a, at a gathering we had that there's no replacement for the in-person uh, exchange that happens between people. And we can do things online and have books and all those kinds of things, but the real uh, juice happens when you're together and you're you're there in person. So that's that's my motives for the events, and uh, then I want to use worldviews media as a platform to bring back spiritual technologies that you know are are looked at as kind of woo woo or um, you know, just kind of vague illusions that people like to follow to protect their own well-being or emotional state so they have some kind of crutch to get through life. I don't believe that at all. I think if if we really uh, ignite the spiritual power within us and have everybody do it, we're going to be we're going to be humming. Uh, you know, the issues with money and all these other things are going to dissolve because we'll, we'll be at our high, higher state instead of all these lower states that we find ourselves in. So that's been my impetus with worldviews uh, since I started, um, which was basically when I was about 15 or 16 and picked up the Bible and then went through theology school. And after leaving theology school had more questions than answers. It's, it's just been a continuation of meeting guys like this and, and putting together uh, seminars and workshops and tours so that people can have that experience in their own body, in their own you know, personal life, and then share that with others. And that, that's the goal with Worldviews and the events that I'm doing. We're gonna start bringing uh, one, speaker like some of the speakers that we've had at the event once a month and we want to kick off a podcast that brings guys like you uh, to speak individually and then again back to the conference and bringing all the guys together so that people see that this is this is a broader broader much broader spectrum than just one person or one individual and when we bring all those pieces together it's like a giant mosaic and that's another thing I do personally as an artist. I worked on mosaics and use that artwork, bring pieces of the puzzle together. So I kind of see myself as maybe a facilitator or agent of bringing those people together for education and getting the general population <laughs> better educated. I mean, if we had young people being educated by Marco and Dan and a group of other teachers that were teaching this math to young people, that's a spiritual path in itself. And we, we view that uh, in brilliance on the young people and we're looking at a brand new future. Nothing like what we have now.
so that's that's kind of myself in an essence and and uh how i see myself in all this because i think this group can support like the first center of excellence for plasmoids which is in india and then as i think is the vision of everyone and and marco is to have a uh, a center of excellence for plasmoids and teaching which is randall's vision of setting that up as well so i think we all have we all recognize two things one is the education system is dead and you know and uh, and so dial does the civilization you know you lose your spiritual core you've lost the center of the hurricane and the storm stops you know so uh we need to put structure back in the core again and as i said that comes back to you know, I think that my major job is not the implementation, which is really I'm hoping to have you guys sort of take over. But my job is to go back to the island and stay in the core because the still centre determines the perfect structure of the still centre determines the force of the hurricane. So that's how I see it. And I, and I think that, you know, for the interpreting the mass and all rest of it, what I do is I see things in my head and then build them. I think that the thing is, if we can explain that, you know, like scientifically in this way, we've got a lot of measuring devices and got the top people, Ricardo's and that involved in this project here, uh, engineers and electricians, and we're doing the reprogramming of the engines and, you know, we're forming. So, but once that's done, then it can be repeated, repeat, 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 repeat. But the educational side, unless we have someone to hand it on to, then it's lost. We act like Captain Bly here, okay? <laughs> okay yeah. All right, let's go with me, mate. Okay, how do we get the plasmoids freed up fr from this ball and chain of a combustion engine? Oh, well, that, I think that's, like I said, Marco, this, okay. So, in, like I said, trying to prove you wrong, all I did was prove the, the geometry and nine and all of that. It's just, it's completely universal. So if you're dealing with the archetype of, the, of energy, a form of energy in the universe, the transducer between the seen and the unseen, it's unlimited. It really, it, it really comes down to the, having the facilities and the, the funding to do these things. And then just whatever the real best obvious directive is, you know, I say Malcolm's engines, I, I understand me saying when he, the, the, the embedding of uh, uh, noble gases into the crystalline structure of the metal, it's perfect. You know, you're making micro, micro vacuum or mac, micro uh, um, uh, plasma chambers, right? And that can be carried even further. That's what I'm saying. This stuff works on every scale, right? So you could do large scales modifications. Just say, just getting his, the sphere ratios perfect. Yeah. So that it's just like- and That's why I need your Phyllis maths. And, but my goal is the next generation of cars is simply, like a fire extinguisher with my implosive turbine with a very simple firing circuit with some diodes on it. So we create yeah. plasma and, and it's just a hydraulic drive with basically Pelton wheels and, and it's self-sustaining, you know, so, so, and, and what we proved with, and I want to make this point, what we proved when we put the leachate from a tip, mm -hmm. and I always wondered about this, <laughs> it came in a really strange way. What if you got all the elements available that we are known and put them together? What's going to happen? Because when you have everything, you have nothing. Do you create ether when you do that? And so, so basically, when you got a tip leachate, you just you got crap from everything. You got crap from uh, the uh, from the radioactive uh, smoke detectors that are thrown on the tip. You've got uh, you know battery assets. You've got batteries. You got here hair dye, I mean, you got everything. A complete gone. compilation of every sin of mankind. <laughs> Correct, yeah. And when, but when, when we ran that, after the plasmoid, we took the leachate and we ran it, and this is in my notes, and I would implore everyone to look at this because this proves everything to everyone. When we ran it, not only did the chemical, comp molecular composition change, the actual elements were disappearing and reappearing on mass wow. and that's in section uh, 17 to 20 of my notes and stroke foundation if you look at section two of that you can see that i've got the raw results i have them still have the machine here and what we did was we we ran it with the plasmoids for 
like three minutes, five minutes, and uh, it meant to be 10 minutes, we could only run it for eight. What we found was the amount of ammonia at the beginning restored itself to exactly the same level at the end. And all the cyanide was gone. There was chemicals that dis chemicals and elements disappeared uh, here that after eight minutes had come back again to their original levels. So, so that simple experiment I wrote, spent six months of my life writing it up and doing tables, explaining the resonant planes that they're operating on. Because, and when I did my experiments in 1998 to 2001, my guy said, wow, we can bring this into production. I said, I'm no, I do not understand what's going on. And this is not, it's not in any textbooks. So I need to understand it first before I can go into commercial production because I can't, I don't know when this is a runaway reaction. I don't know whether the black holes are containable. I don't know whether the plasmoids are friendly or unfriendly, you know, so, and actually now I have a personal relationship with it, which I wanted to take you to the next level, which it seems like now that I'm handing it over to you guys, somehow my relationship to plasmoids has increased because maybe they trust me now because I've done what I said I was going to do, which is, this, you know, and I think that that is personally where I'm going with that because if you understand that you can ask a plasmoid to do or not do anything if you go uh to your bible and you go to job uh you know um 38 35 you'll see that god says that he can ask the plasmoids to create lightning and they come back and say here we are we are here right so so that's in the bible right and you can go to the word right? It says it in the word, we'll go to Genesis, the word, first there was the word. So then I took the word and split it up into, as you know, you know, one to nine, 10 to 90, 100 to 900, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 one, 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 hydrogen, two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 carbon, right? Uh, seven, 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 nitrogen, eight, 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 oxygen, eight protons eight electrons eight neutrons so the word the actual hebrew language describes the elements and then they just repeat every eight because every eighth element is a noble gas so you look at my model of the elements and it's in genesis it's the word first was the word and if you add them up in columns that's one to nine forty five four fifty four thousand five hundred so what i'm saying is is that the whole universe you can actually see the structure and form in language and in the the geometry so that sacred geometry that's why i spoke to randall for seven years while i was writing up my notes because he was one person i believe could you know really understand the form and function of these things and that's where we need to get back to like the 18th century observe nature and copy it and i think that the next step for us is to get those very simple principles over and for my part, that I think that um, that there's another level here that needs to be understood. And if you go to the Sanskrit text, you can read it. And when I read it in university, I didn't understand it. When I read it at Laguna Beach, where uh, was the uh, still is the ashram from the guy that interpreted the Sanskrit text? His ashram is still at Laguna Beach in California. I stayed there for six weeks, six months, uh, just downloading from there and and writing my notes. But to that. But the point being is that I think that there's a more astounding thing is that in the, the next step, which is an unusual and unexpected thing to me, is that what if um, we can ask the plasmoids to provide all our energy for us because the Bible says we can, we have the authority to do that. And uh -huh. that I think is the Hopi legend. I think that's the paradox. That the paradox is that the ultimate power in the universe is to be a part of it and have be in relationship with the entities that create uh, planets from suns, you know, and, and transmutate matter. My experiments with a simple leachate proved that an engine can run and generate more fuel, more ammonia, and more energy than it takes to produce the ammonia, right? So, and your fuel tank is the atmosphere. So that's what is proven in those notes. If you read them, it's astounding uh, that 
uh, and even the layman here that saw that experiment and the, you know they're just you know they're mechanics and you know practical guys you know plumbers electrician or rest of it but when they saw that experiment they ran that experiment with us and they saw the results you know they understood that that what what had happened in that experiment was that 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 uh, basically by running that leachate we were actually producing a different set of elements than we started out with and that assaying cost us five thousand pounds just for the assay results of those uh four samples and that's in the notes and that's an important thing so i think that that with the stripe foundation not for profit is that um that uh, with the the governments now putting their shoulder to the wheel the israeli government they need all of us uh to give them the mass and stuff because it can't be done with what they've been taught they're all just lab rats <laughs> you know i mean they have to feed them every day and you know otherwise they die so so the thing is that 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 that's how i see it now and i think that from my point of view obviously i would love to go back to my island and uh, just do my thing because i think the danger is the longer i'm in society the less you know i lose this the geometry i lose the symmetry and lose the force yeah so that's that's my that's really part of it so and i think that i can empathize with marco on that because i think it's it's a difficult thing trying to interpret to people yeah anyway that's <laughs> that's my contribution i think that the intention is really important i think that if I examine my life, you know, I had a vision in 1977, my great great grandfather 500 years ago, and that's when I learned there was no time space because, and then I saw him bury a cutting stone where I drilled my oil well and I found the same cutting stone. And then in the same apparition, it wasn't a vision, it was an apparition, I was awake, I saw it and I'm just sharing that. But what uh, what I saw was it going ahead, like was the technology and all this, but on my time on the island by myself, um, when your mind after three months or six months stills enough yeah so you can hear then yeah. the the plasmoids themselves um very much the intent of taking a sun and turning it into a planet to design they work on like blueprints if you like like the soul is a blueprint for the body there's a, a spiritual a soul a fifth dimensional blueprint for everything and we simply the soul within which the body grows survives but my understanding now is and i sort of i only learned about the, the shamir name which is a really interesting thing that i'll share and i i've got the right person to share it with here so i'm very honored to, to be able to share um to somebody uh that's capable of understanding because of their peculiar history you know and i have a peculiar history because i'm the end of a race yeah so um but the interesting concept is what if um the plasmoids respond to intent so if your intent is to empower people they're your friend if your intent is to disempower right. people they're your enemy right yeah it's a it's a new concept and i'm just learning that now because there was this extraordinary thing because so i only learned the word shamir which is the plasmoid's real name that comes from solomon because i obviously the molten sea i reverse engineered the molten sea with the plasmoids the plasmoids were created to charge the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant by the way is the square is is uh 2.5 cubits by 1.5 cubit by 1.5 cubit which means that is is uh, 5.625 square cubits you multiply that by 64 is 360 degrees <laughs> it's 64 it's a 64 segments of my model of the element <laughs> so, yeah. so it's just these very simple things but get this so then i said to the plasmoids well wait a minute how come you know you i only just learned this i don't know it was whether it was two weeks ago forward so i've been on a build so my time space is a bit wacko because i've been working seven days a week but but and too tired but the point is is that it was very interesting to saying well wait a minute um it was, if you read solomon's things 
he was he had their name and he was commanding them to etch things on diamonds commanding them to cut the uh say the the the, the temple stones and then probably they cut the polygonal stones because they their job is to create planets and so but they're a conscious energy force and i think that the thing that i'm what happened to me was simply i said to more okay well wait a minute i've been doing this for 50 years <laughs> i've only just find out the name shamir right so so why haven't i had that name quite extraordinary they said like well because we thought if you had our name you would try to use us and you'd be overcome with the power thing yeah power corrupts and i said look i love my relationship with you i'm working out of relationship i would ask you to do it if you didn't you know i wouldn't be forcing you because i don't want to force my free will on you and so that changed my relationship with the plasmoids because it was a matter of intent you know and it's just a so subtle thing i've only just realized it myself but you know and i'm getting ready to go back to my island because i can only survive in society for a limited amount of time before i i slowly lose that connection and that connection is very valuable it's the most valuable thing in my life is my connection to the holy spirit the great spirit and the plasmoids because because you know it, it, that's and if we can get that understanding over because it's it means that the form and function i can understand by personally talking to them and that's what i've tried to put in my models and that's the only way i can communicate but with everyone here it needs the maths behind it and the stuff because i'm not that man right <laughs> i'm downloading form and function and i think dan i think the thing is that you're doing the same thing with marco and with randall is trying to take this information and structure it in such a way that you can educate i'm not an educator yeah so and and I can't do that. So I think this is a paradox of what I see. And but I do understand something is that that I would be very loath to use that power, you know. But I I'm becoming aware that from the Sanskrit text when I read it in university, I couldn't understand how could someone like Lord Indra wield that power and what was the instrument? Maybe it wasn't an instrument. Maybe it's just the the instruction and the the relationship that that he had with the plasmoids that they trusted that his intent was uh, to empower people and to empower civilization not to destroy it anyway this so interesting I, I go full circle to my original point which is which is of course what you say as well angle um ratio and alignment of these plasmoids, how do we create uh, a visually, I do it with math, but how do we create hardware that is a visual tool? How do we show um, plasmoids in re regards to density? How do, we, I mean, you must have, Malcolm, you probably have better antidotes than I'm trying to come up with. I understand exactly what you're talking about. I mean, because I talk about everything I see now is seen talked about really is charge density because an implosion is is increasing the charge density, which is uh, reversing time, and an explosion is is decreasing the charge density and is accelerating time. So that's death and destruction, accelerating time. The life force is bringing things together and in symmetry and spiraling them into each other, like you know DNA. So. So the life force is an implosive force. And so, so and the when I fused myself with the plasmoids, um, the physical, the, the, it was a it was a full-on, you know, US Navy, Michael Millich um, experiment, you know, and uh, they wanted to use a criminal off death row. Yeah. And I said, you really want a criminal off death row to be the smartest man in the world. You know, so, <laughs> so, so it, was, it was a little bit like um uh, uh forbidden planet oh my favorite i haven't seen that i don't think forbidden planet no. movie the forbidden planet oh it's probably one of the most amazing it was the first color sci-fi movie ever made <laughs> there must yeah, have, with leslie nielsen know. and the, the story of it is prophetic and profound and beautiful I, I i i think that's a great teaching tool for anybody that hasn't seen it 
because it basically comes down to with ultimate yeah. power all that matters is what is your real intention and do yeah. you have full control of your intention does your subconscious still rule what you think is your conscious and that's the whole thing of going to the other side and dissolving the ego and dissolving all that you become trustworthy you, you open yourself out and you step out of your separation and you become united and wow now we can trust you you're part of the family yeah and when you have nothing of everything when all my stuff was stolen at for the last time, you know, but the time before that and the time before that, seven times all my business. So I had no notes and I was up in the airplane saying to God, okay, so now we're all screwed. I've lost all my notes. I've lost everything. And he said, no, you haven't, <laughs> you've, you've gained everything. Now you've lost everything. You, well, now you have nothing. I can give you everything because when you had everything, I could give you nothing. They're sentient and they're also swarm and they share they can see so through the zero point this is the interesting thing there is no time space so everything novel is known and nothing remains unknown and that's that's it says when the cause of all causes is known then everything novel is known and nothing remains unknown well, well what that is it says if you can visit the zero point where there is no time space then everything that's ever been known and everything that's going to be known is known